Hey, my name is Bailey Weiser. I am the owner of Helju Photography, a North Georgia newborn and family photography studio, and welcome to my channel. Today, we're gonna to talk all things editing and how I successfully deliver my clients' images to them within one week of their session date. I hear photographers talk about editing a lot and how frustrating they feel or how long the process takes, how far behind they are in editing, and I see photographers post their editing lists on Instagram stories and how they're 15, 20 sessions behind um, in queue. And I don't think that's living free. I don't think that is operating at your highest potential. Um, I do know that editing can take time, but I do know that editing does not have to be something that bogs you down. And I love the creative process of not only taking the images, but being able to put them on the computer and manipulate them and edit them in a way that is true to life, but also is really artistic. And so today we're gonna to talk about Lightroom. We're gonna walk through my process from beginning to end on how I call my images and compare my images, how I um, do my fine tune details, how I apply presets that I've created in the entire process. So I hope that you enjoy this video and you find it as an amazing resource for you if you are struggling in the editing process. Okay, so the very first thing that I do after I have uploaded all of my images into Lightroom um, is I will go and look at the session as a whole. Um, and when they've uploaded, I had to undo the work that I already did so that I could show you from the very beginning. But when they're uploaded, what I'll do is I'll go through and I will see any that need to be rotated and I will click on them and then I will rotate. I have already done the rotation, so I'm not gonna undo that part, but I go through and just make sure everything that is rotated needs to be rotated. Um, I like to edit in sections. I think that is the quickest way um, to edit, but it's also the most efficient way to make sure your lighting is correct and all of those things. So one way that I, I do this is I select my first image and even if it's out of focus, even if I don't want to keep it, I will go ahead and um, I'm just going to import this bad boy. Um, I am going to apply my presets. So I have made my own presets and then I adjust as needed uh, like that. And then I create a masking to the back of my image that I have adjusted and adjust that a little bit. Pull that down a smidge. Okay, so once I'm satisfied with my general edit, what I will do is go back to this screen and go to every photo in that section. So that whole section will be photos of just baby. And then I sync them. I also sync my mask. This is a new feature in Lightroom that I absolutely love. Um, I don't mask my healing or my crop, just the basic edit plus the mask. So I'm gonna let that sync. It normally takes a few minutes if I select the mask to sync as well, but to me, it is so worth it. Um, so while this is uploading, one thing I am gonna say is I do a general base edit first, and then I go through and um, do my calling after I've made that first base slap edit. Um, after I've done my calling, what I will do is go back and do my fine tune edits, my cropping, my adjustments, and then that section is done. Then I move to the next section. I'll do one base edit for the family photos. Then I'll apply that to all of those, make my um, selections as far as calling goes, then make fine tune adjustments, cropping, and then I move on. Um, I'll show you the way that I compare my images as I go. Um, I think that is extremely helpful just to make sure my skin tones are consistent between baby and um, laying on the blanket versus laying on, um, like and laying in their parents' arms. Um, and just to make sure that colors look correct, skin tones look correct, and everything feels consistent throughout the entire session. 
Um, so I'm gonna let this finish and then we are going to keep going. Okay, so now that that has masked, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select all of my images that look similar in a row. So for me, these three are super similar. So I'm selecting those three and I'm gonna hit the letter N. So the letter N allows you to compare um, all of them at the same time. So I don't love this one. And so now I'm between these two. I really like how I can see both of the eyes in this face. It seems a little bit more in focus as well. So I'm gonna get rid of that guy. And then I'm gonna keep moving on. These two seem really similar. This one, the foot is blurry, so it's gotta go. And I keep going. These four seem similar. Um, I'm gonna get rid of that one and that one. So that's the way that I go through. That one is standalone. Let's see, sometimes I have to, oh, that one's a duplicate. I made that duplicate for a black and white. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete it. So I'm gonna keep that one. I'm gonna keep going, that one's a duplicate. So you can see these two are super similar. If I compare, uh, get rid of that one. So I try not to spend too much time culling. Um, to me, if I don't absolutely love it the first time I see it, um, it's not a keeper. So, super similar, super similar. So now it really boils down to, is there one that's more in focus? keep this one. All right, so that's how I do the calling process. Once I've gone through and I have called, I like his little expression in that one. Once I've gone through and called, then I'm ready to go through and make my fine tune edits. So let's pretend that I've called this section and now I'm going back to the beginning. Um, I'm gonna double check that my mask is correct because it is AI, sometimes it's not 100%, so I like to make that check. And then I'm gonna go through and I'm going to adjust, whoops, wrong thing. I'm gonna adjust any of my corners that are not in line. I'm gonna adjust that stuff. And then I notice on little guy, we've got some acne, we've got a little bit of leftover from um, some redness where his outfit was, um, or not acne, we've got some dry skin. And then we've got a, a little scratch right here. So when I'm doing my fine tune edits, Q is gonna be your best friend. Hitting the Q button, button and then hitting the bracket bar or sliding two fingers down on your keypad, just depending on if you've got a Mac or not. But I'm gonna hit Q, I'm gonna go through I'm gonna make adjustments as I see needed. And then I do this on one image first, and then I go to the next. So face looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna to move to the belly. And I like to use the, the um, the heel tool, the clone stamp is great if I am trying to get rid of distractions and backgrounds. Um, but when it comes to skin, I feel like using the heel is the most accurate. Um, and so that's just, and it's the fastest. So again, oops, letter Q. I'm gonna fix a little bit of his dry skin right there. And then we got some spots on our little feet. I try really hard to still retain detail and wrinkles in baby's skin because I don't want my babies to not look real. Um, but I do understand that the dry skin can be kind of irritating to see in photos for parents. And most of the time I do ask my clients ahead of the session if there's anything in particular they would like edited out, whether it be on a mom or a baby. And for the most part, usually it's either acne or dry skin that I get requests for. And so there's some things that I just can't edit out. Um, but for the most part, I try really hard to make those requests happen.
And if it's something I can't do, I definitely will outsource it if I know it's gonna take a lot of time, like changing the nail polish color or something crazy like that. So I've, I've edited this photo, I'm happy with it. Um, the only other thing that I might do if I really wanted to is go over a little man's eyes. Oh, not that. With K, go over a little man's eyes and just make sure that they, not grass, iris enhance, is that they have a little pop on them. Um, and that's it. So now I'm done. And then I move to the next. I do the whole process for each section and then I move on. So to compare my colors, well, let's just say I've, I've done this one and now I've got a side view. So I'm going to go back to that first photo and I'm going to hit in again. I'm going to make sure that skin tones look the same, which they do. The only thing that I see that looks a little bit different is this background looks a little bit more warm than this blanket. And it's because it is, it's a different shade of white. So I'm going to hit the letter M and I'm going to drag down my gradial filter and I am just going to adjust the color a little bit. You get a little more blue, a little more white. And then I'm going to hit my N again and compare. And to me, that looks a little bit better. So I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to zoom in. I don't have any baby acne on the feet this time, but I do have, oh, I've already fixed this, that's why. Um, I did have some acne and some dry milk, so I took care of all that already in this photo. Um, I do love the little bubbles on the lips. I don't edit those out. I think that they are perfect the way that they are. Um, I could get these little crusties around the eye if I want, oh, that was too close. If I wanted to. But for the most part, I do all of my fine tune detail image by image per section, and then I move forward. So let's move on to the next section. Say that I've just gotten all of these done. I'm gonna move to the family photos. So again, what I'm gonna do is hit the develop after I have made sure everything's cropped. I'm gonna apply my preset. I'm gonna zoom in to make sure that I like my colors. I think we're a little bit warm for my taste. So now I'm gonna apply my background mask. And this is not a photo I'm gonna keep, and I'll tell you why in a second, but I'm still gonna apply my preset on it. So, I'm do that. Brighten my whites a little bit. I'm gonna pull down my highlights, and then I'm gonna slap it on all the other family photos where they're standing. And I'll tell you why in a second. So we're gonna move the laying down in a minute, but all of my standing ones, I'm gonna sink, including the mask. Okay, so now that these have all synced in, I'm gonna go through and do my duplicate coal. So all of these are super similar. And to be quite honest, I'm gonna stash, like get rid of all of them. Um, and I'll tell you why in just a second. So delete, 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 delete. What you'll notice is I went back and made an adjustment to make sure that I could see baby's face because I made the mistake during their session to not have them rotate baby initially. So I actually went back and redid that pose later on in the session with baby's face showing, um, if I can find it and maybe in the second section, um, uh, because the last thing you want is just a picture of the top of your baby's head. So went through and fixed that. And then I'm going to go through and look at, duplicates, see things that I like, things that I don't like, similarities, differences, things that are in focus, things that are out of focus, faces in between snaps. Those two are similar. Let's see, delete that one. So I'm just going to go through and call as I go and then move on to the next section. Okay, so once I have gone through the process of culling by section, after I've applied that base preset, then going through making my minor adjustments such as, you know, crop or 
um, if things are not quite lined up, and then my blemishes. After I've done all of that, what I will do is I will go through and pick a couple favorites from each section. So whether this is in studio and by each section, I mean baby independently, parent standing, parent sitting, things like that, or section meaning location. So maybe I am doing an outdoor family session, but I've got some photos in a field, some photos under a tree, some photos by a lake, whatever it might be. Those are my sections. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll pick a few favorites from each section and I will just select them real fast. And they don't have to be my absolute favorite. They're just ones from each section. I'll do that one instead. And I try to do a variety of far away and close up like that. I hit that letter N. And this is where I'm going to compare my colors. And so right now I can tell right off the bat that this one to me feels a little green. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to pull those pinks up just a smidge. Maybe a little more. And go back to N. That looks a little better. Um, go back. Okay, that looks better. This one to me also looks a little warm still. It's a great little filter. Pull that down a smidge. Okay, all right, better, better, better. Then I'm gonna look at mom and dad's faces, colors of clothes all of those things. This one feels like the background is a little bit darker. Brighten that a smidge. Brighten mom a smidge. And then we're good. So I feel confident that the images are consistent throughout the session since I've pulled a variety of images from different sections in the session. The next thing, oh, this one feels a little dark. I say that. I'm always gonna find little things to adjust. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is pick my absolute favorites from the session, which I have already done. You can see that there's some duplicates. So I'll pick my favorites like I already did right before this. And just like that, I'll select them. And then I will two finger click and go down to create virtual copies. So what that does is it copies the exact image, all of the adjustments I've made, everything. And this is how I create my black and whites. So I have found over time, that I like to only select a few to deliver black and white in. The ones that I really, really love are the ones that I feel like are really special. The rest are only delivered in color. But I have learned that if I deliver some in black and white and some in color, that inevitably I'm gonna have those families that don't love black and white images come back and ask for those images in color. So they have a few images in their galleries that are duplicates. But what I do is once I've created that virtual copy, I will apply my black and white preset. And so I kind of duplicate um, the process. I'll go over to, which I've already done, but let's just say I went over and applied my preset, but I've already done it, made my adjustments, and then I um, select those favorites and sync them across that and then make those minor adjustments as far as um, exposure and things like that in the black and white uh, field. That is how I handle a lot of my editing. I will say it does not take me extremely long to edit sessions. I probably on average spend between an hour, hour and a half, depending on how bad baby's acne is or how many family members there are. But I do not deliver my images the minute that I finish editing them because I feel like that's doing my clients a disservice. Um, I will go back to my gallery. I'll leave it. I'll go work on something else, not editing. Um, I'll go work on something else. I'll go for a walk. I'll lay my kids down for a nap, whatever it might be. If it's the same day, if it's the next day, I will come back and revisit the gallery because when you stare at your computer and the same images for so long, you kind of lose sight of what adjustments might be missing or what you may have forgotten or that the colors are just not right. And so I will table my editing after I feel like the whole session has been edited well. And then I will come back to it either a couple hours later or the next day. And if everything looks great, then I deliver the images. 
Um, I never deliver them as soon as I finish because I feel like that is just rushing to rush instead of ensuring that I love them, that my clients will love them and that I've done um, due diligence in making sure that everything looks good. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are interested to see some more editing videos or tutorials on how to wrap a baby or posing, anything like that, make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button below and stay tuned for new videos being added to this channel every single week. See you next time.